and I waste a bit. I got every bit of that off, and then some. <laughs> Which I was gonna explain to y'all, one of the best parts of the corn on the cob, especially when you're gonna cream it, is to what's called milk the cob. You use the back of the knife, and you scrape down and see all that juiciness that's coming out? And going all over that, you. That's what's in your mouth now, but it also is great to add to the creamed corn. So Here real we sweet. Well, there might be a little left on mine. Who's going to eat this? Oh, no, that's fine then. <laughs> all right. Hey, that's what we do it at home, right? So I'm putting my corn in my little cast iron skillet. <laughs> You're going to need some floss after I that. I have a big piece of corn right in the center of my two front teeth. Now, does it have to be a cast iron skillet? No, but that's kind of got that rustic thing. Plus, it's much less likely to stick. Uh, it's great on your grill. You don't need to worry about like a stainless steel skillet is going to discolor out there on your grill. Yeah. Cast iron is just going to season it up even more. Okay, so we're going to obviously need a larger cast iron skillet and a larger grill if you're cooking <laughs> for more than two people. Uh, obviously, yeah. This is our, our you know, little kind of fancy one. You see it a lot of restaurants nowadays. Yeah. Um, to this, because it is creamed corn, uh -huh. we're going to add a little bit of that milk and cream. We love it. Yeah, our good friends there. Yeah. Which is low temp pasteurized and not homogenized, which I remind y'all, when you go to pour and there's a big old lump that comes out. Don't get grossed out. That's because it's not homogenized. You shake it up, that won't happen. This is a little bit of Paula Lambert's mascarpone cheese, which is from the mozzarella company here in Dallas. Yum. Hit this with some cumin. And now that we've got our burgers off the grill, I'm gonna char up a jalapeno. We're gonna put that down in there. Is that simmering away? Our burgers that we removed, this is some more of Paula's cheese with the Fresh Mozzarella Company. It's called Ancho Cacciota, which is fancy for pepper jack. <laughs> so I'm gonna it's put it. It's got a little bit more jack in it, I think, than the regular pepper jack. Yeah, a little more jack and a little more pepper too. Yeah. Okay, this right now is rare to medium rare. So mm -hmm. we're gonna put this in the oven to get finished off. Yeah, I like mine well done, please. And <laughs> we gonna... will uh, send out for a fast food hamburger for you to enjoy <laughs> while I share that second burger with somebody that appreciates a nice medium. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. So we're going to char this up. Okay. Okay. Our corn over here, we'll move over to the side. And we're going to get ready for all of our toppings now. Ooh, I'm ready for that. And what kind of toppings do you want to do? <laughs> this is going to be a giant burger, just the way it's working out. It is so the 4th of July. I think we need a giant tomato. We need to go out with a bang. Speaking of 4th of July, do you know how to sing the Star Spangled Banner or anything patriotic? Anytime you ask me if I know how to sing something, I probably know how, but it does not mean I will sing it on television. <laughs> You're welcome. That's my present to you guys. <laughs> I think we should sing that. That would be nice. Avo, we are. <laughs> you, you can uh, finish this segment with a little serenade for I us. I think we should. It's a patriotic crowd. All right, Avo, we're going to be smashing that on, so I'm just squeezing this out. That's my favorite thing to do at home now, because Garth taught me how to squeeze the Avo out from the skin, rather than scoop it out like I always used to just take a big old spoon and scoop it out. Why? Why was I wasting a dirty spoon? I could just squeeze like it out. Like a bunt pan. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> I'm not wasting that bunt pan. That's a good idea. All Paula right. Dean taught me. The other thing I try to teach you, but I know you won't listen, is just to get that seed out, we just pop it from the back with the knife. <laughs> Until you start smashing that up for yes, me. Yes, I would love to. I've got to use that fork right there. Uh-huh. Okay, my tomatoes, I'm not going to salt those, as always, until right before we go to serve them. Those are beautiful. Because that will pull all the, the juice out, and that's going to give you a really soggy hamburger bun. We don't want no soggy buns. Yeah, look how juicy that, that tomato is. Oh, man, they're looking gorgeous right now. It's the best time of year. So do a couple extras. Okay, that hamburger's gonna go in the oven based on how thick those are, probably for a good eight to 12 minutes to get it to medium, 12 to 15 okay. uh, for like medium, like a warm medium, medium plus center. Medium well, that'd be <laughs> I good. I don't like to call it that. <laughs> All right, how's that? Looks good. Perfect. And I'm just gonna cut my jalapenos up. Look at this thing, this is giant. It's beautiful. All right. How are you cutting those? With the seeds? I did. I know you like some heat. So yeah. Are you leaving the char skin on? Oh, yeah. Okay. Look how good that's looking. Oh, my gosh. Can y'all see that? That is going to be amazing. Okay. If you're not doing this on the grill, you could certainly do it on a burner. 
And once it's cooked, if you want to make sure it's not burning to the bottom of the pan, yeah. just toss it in your oven at like 250 or 300 degrees and let it uh, just continue to stay warm in there. Oh, fantastic. Pretty okay, cool. y'all got to stay with us. We are going to build the best, juiciest all American burger you ever saw in your whole entire life. Stay with us. Pressure's on. <laughs>